Hey everybody, I, I want to offer my deepest apologies. Uh, I can't even believe I did this, but I forgot to put my in-game settings in the video that I posted. And a viewer pointed that out to me. Um, all, all I could say is that I must have just been loopy from having played with these settings for, I don't know, 15, 16 hours a day for five days trying to find the correct <laughs> Uh, the correct settings anyways so I, I, I apologize so I'm going to show them now and I'm going to give you a caveat here first off let me show you that I'm flying in an area that is uh, very nice looking here uh, I'm actually not far from I think uh, the uh, uh, Yosemite National Park here uh, is where I'm flying right now so, and as you can see, I am getting frame rates over 40 right now. I'm getting 42, 43 frames per second. I can read my gauges. I can read most of the text that I have to on the panels, although I don't really need to read much of that as long as I can see my gauges. I have my zoom capability with my mouse if I really needed it, but I can read all those numbers, so I'm not really concerned with that. To me, the graphics quality outside looks very good and it looks very smooth. And those are the things that I shoot for with my settings. Now these settings may not be the ones that everybody would like. You know, everybody's eyes are different. Every computer in the world is different. If you take two computers off the assembly line two minutes apart from each other, there's gonna be differences. I can guarantee that. I've been in IT for 25 years now, and I can tell you that every computer is different, and everybody's eyes are different. Now, some of the function of virtual desktop with SteamVR is based on the strength of your computer's connection to your wireless router. So they recommend that what you have is a dedicated wireless router for this only. Um, I don't have that, but I plan on getting a gaming router next month and we'll see what kind of a difference that makes. But right now my computer is connected directly to a gigabit port on my router with a CAT8 cable. That provides me gigabit speeds from my computer to my router. And then my router is wirelessly broadcasting it to my Quest headset. So. The more traffic on my network, the worse the performance. The farther away I am from my wireless router, the worse the performance. Um, and the quality, and this is a Spectrum internet router, wireless router, it's provided by my ISP, nothing special. So I'm assuming that my latency is gonna improve substantially with a gaming router. But like I said, I mean this, this to me is really, really smooth. It looks very, very good visually in my eyes. The brightness, the contrast, the colors, and so forth are all, you know, set to my preferences. But as far as just the overall quality of the game, I, I, it looks it looks realistic to me. What can I say? And I'm getting 37, 30. Now look at 39 frames per second here. So anyways, let me get to it. And again, I apologize that I had to do this in a second video. I don't know what happened on the first one, but uh, let me just turn here so that I don't run into anything. And let me show you my in-game settings. Okay, so now you have to remember that this is in conjunction with the settings that are in that other video. So my in-game render resolution is at 85. That gives me a resolution of 1592 by 1654. And yes, that is low. However, my OpenXR resolution is 1874 by 1946. Again, may seem a little low. However, my Steam VR per app resolution is 160%. That is the same as when you use the Oculus app and you go into the render resolution 
and you pick the render resolution multiplier, 1.1, 1.5, .1, whatever you pick under the setting that you go to. In the so I achieved the same thing because those settings do not have any bearing on my headset when I'm not using the Oculus OpenXR driver or the link cable for the Oculus or the ear link. So those settings, I can set it to 1.1, 1.6. It makes no difference in my headset. So I achieved that, like I said, through Steam VR by increasing the per app resolution to 160% is the modifier. So that is why I can do my low numbers, get my high frame rate, and still have nice looking graphics. Now I read an article, and I'll put the link in the settings, but somebody went and broke down every single one of these settings, talked about their hit on the frame rate performance and then the they gave a rating on how much quality it actually adds to the game and it really is a neat article so anyhow so i'm on taa for anti-aliasing my terrain level of detail is only 95 my off-screen pre-caching high Terrain vector, medium. Buildings, medium. Trees, medium. Grass and bushes, off. Objects level of detail, 135. Volumetric clouds, low. Sometimes I put them up on medium or high, but you know what? To me, they really don't, I mean, it doesn't really seem to make that much difference. Yeah, if I put them up on ultra, boy, they look nice, but then my frame rates really go back to fluey. So with me, I'm perfectly happy with them on low. To me, they look okay. They look they look good enough. <laughs> uh, my texture resolution is ultra. Anisotropic filtering, maxed at 16. Texture super sampling, maxed at 8. Texture synthesis, high. Water waves, low. Shadow maps, 1536. Terrain shadows, off. Contact shadows, medium. Windshield effects, medium. Ambient occlusion, high. Cube map reflections, 192. Ray marched reflections, medium. Light shafts, off. Bloom on. Glass cockpit refresh rate, medium. That's a mouthful. Glass cockpit refresh rate is set at medium. Now, at this point, I don't think I have any traffic on... Um, no, I don't have any real airline traffic on. I do have some things turned on like aircraft density vehicles, aircraft vehicles and workers and road vehicles. Um, you know, that, those are nice, but, you know, you really, the airport vehicle and ground, you see those when you're at the airport. Well, you know what? I don't spend much time at the airport. I, I get in my airplane, I configure it, I taxi and I take off. So it really doesn't add a whole lot to my game enjoyment to know that there's 72 jets sitting at the airport. Now, if I was flying heavies, and believe me, if we get a good 737, a good 727, or the MD-80 series, then I will definitely be flying heavies more often. But at that point, hopefully I'll have a reverb G2. I just don't know how those will react with my settings because um, I, I don't fly heavies right now, and I haven't tested any of these settings with, like, the Airbus 320, uh, 320 series or anything like that. But like I said, it doesn't add enjoyment to the game or the sim to me at this point in the way that I use it to have a bunch of airplanes and cars running around the airport because I don't spend my time there. So I don't have a lot turned on there. I like to see some things there when I'm there, but I'm not there very often. So data-wise, I have live real air world traffic off and live weather off currently because when I'm doing work hours, and this is actually work hours right now for me, I'm just on a short break uh, because I wanted to get this up there quickly. Uh, I have a lot of other computers on my network running, and so I don't have this on. But I, I usually will have live weather on and live traffic. And if I put those on now, you know, I'm going to go ahead and switch to it. Um, I don't think I can. Can I switch to live traffic in the game? I don't think I can. I mean, live uh, weather. Oh, fine. 
let's see. Uh, all right, so yeah, I can, okay, so we'll go to live weather, we'll see what happens. All right. Oops. Okay, so I've just enabled live weather and live traffic. And they've updated because my clouds have changed. <laughs> Um, and I'm looking at 39 frames per second. Whoop, there we go. It just finished popping in because now we got my snow and the rest of the clouds. All right, so I am now flying with live traffic and live weather. My frame rate is, and it might have popped up because sometimes that happens when I change my settings. Um, the frame rate that the app displays jumps way up to the top of my view but right now I am looking at 39 that is the number that is on my frame rate counter with my settings with live traffic with live weather and with what I consider to be a very very acceptable graphics quality and I'm gonna just really quickly go to a different location really fast because this is a nice but it's rather plain to show so one second pretty decent so, so anyhow so now i'm closer here we're you know 4500 feet my frame rate counter up there which again is probably out of sight for the recording is reading 38 right now 39 and this is with the live weather and the live traffic re-enabled so you saw my in-game settings. All I can offer them, do all I can do is offer them to you. Again, with the caveat, everybody's computer is different. Everybody's setup is different. Everybody's eyes are different. But I have yet to see anybody, and it may just be that I missed it. And if you have knowledge of it, then please let me know. But I have yet to see anybody achieve frame rates of 40 plus with the Oculus Quest 2 with out having, you know, the super cards um, in their system. And I just have a small laptop. Yes, it has a great graphics card, but I'm not using a massive gaming PC. I'm using a AMD Ryzen 9 Alienware laptop, um, you know, with a 15 inch screen which is why i don't play on there but anyways i hope this helps and again i really apologize that this wasn't in the first video all right uh see you in the skies